Hello there. The special Brexit rules criticised by London are strengthening the economy in the British-controlled part of Northern Ireland. This is suggested by trade data and economic models. However, consumers in the former civil war region must expect higher prices than in the theoretical case that the United Kingdom would still be part of the EU. The value of British sales to Northern Ireland rose by 7% in 2021. That means after the introduction of the so-called Northern Ireland Protocol compared to the previous year. And that's according to the Northern Ireland Statistics Office. Northern Ireland sales to the UK increased by 13%. Exports to the neighboring EU member state of Ireland and to other EU countries increased even more. The Statistics Office emphasized that the effects of inflation were not included. Unlike the UK, Northern Ireland is a de facto member of the EU Customs Union and Single Market, even after Brexit. This arrangement is intended to prevent a hard border with Ireland and thus old conflicts from uh, flaring up again. However, a customs border was created before, between Northern Ireland and the rest of the UK. There were trade barriers. Some British companies stopped deliveries to Northern Ireland. The mostly Protestant supporters of the Union fear that the protocol will promote the reunification of the part of the country with Ireland, which is what Catholics in particular are demanding. The government in London is therefore threatening the EU with breaching the agreement unilaterally. However, model calculations by the University of Sussex revealed, contrary to British and Unionist politicians, that the protocol actually promotes the Northern Irish economy. According to this, production in the part of the country will increase by 2.2% compared to the kingdom remaining in the EU. Thanks to the protocol, producers would have good access to both the UK and EU markets, but also less competition from the UK because of the tariff border. At the same time, however, the customs barriers for British goods meant that consumer prices, again compared to remaining in the EU, rose by 4.3%. This reduces overall economic prosperity by 2.4%. The Brexit debate has dominated daily events not only in the United Kingdom since 2013. In the European Union too, Great Britain's exit from the EU repeatedly caused debates and disputes. On February 1, 2020, Great Britain left the EU and on January 1, 2021, the country left the customs union and the internal market of the EU. The transition period served to ensure that the contracts for economic cooperation did not break off from one day to, the no to another, and British representatives and EU diplomats struggled to reach a joint exit agreement until the last moment, and the negotiations were tough. The negotiations only ended on Christmas Eve. On December 30th in 2020, the British House of Commons overwhelmingly approved the Brexit trade deal. MPs voted 521 to 73 in second reading for the EU law proposed by Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Important changes affect trade in goods, logistics, aviation and the financial sector. The public has certainly noticed that Brexit is not going according to plan or to promise. A survey in November showed that 56% of Britons now consider it a mistake and this is more than ever before. The country is suffering from a collective Brexit hangover. Even among those who voted to leave in 2016, a fifth have now become anti-Brexit. Nonetheless, there are no signs that the government under Rishi Sunak is planning a rapprochement with the EU in order to limit the damage caused by Brexit. Instead, the government is stubbornly clinging to the belief that Brexit could somehow turn out really great. When rumors circulated a few weeks ago that the government was trying to restart relations with the EU based on the Swiss model, Downing Street immediately denied it. Under no circumstances would that be done. Yes, because the EU wouldn't. An approach in which Great Britain would have to adopt regulations and standards from the EU is out of the question. I know that Brexit can bring enormous benefits to the country, said Sunak without going into detail about what those benefits are. And this stubbornness is also due to the fact 
that it is considered good manners among the hardcore of the Tories and the right-wing conservative press to celebrate Brexit. Both groups are extremely influential, and so it's hardly to be expected that a Brexit reversal will come under Rishi Sunak, no matter how great the damage becomes, and that damage will become bigger and bigger. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.